This video is protected by fair use and it is not for profit. Share it freely. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sovereign Spirits, where we explore methods on how to escape the reincarnation cycle, transcend the white light, and use our intention in a willful and powerful way to make... Notice that? I'm going to play that again so that you see the second time in case you missed it the first time. Let's take a look here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sovereign Spirits, where we explore methods on how to escape the reincarnation. Okay, so there's number one. That's not just an adjustment. That's a grab and a hold. Okay? That's his right eye. It's on our left-hand side, but that's his right eye. This video, she's on the right. He's on the left. It was the opposite in the previous video that I covered from them. Wayne Bush was over here and Elvira was over here. Wayne's world was on the right and Elvira was on the left. So they reversed it. That's interesting. But here's the hold right there. That's number one, first 10 seconds of their video. cycle, transcend the white light and use our intention in a willful and powerful way. There's number two. That's the second time in 18 seconds, the first 18 seconds. He's done that twice to start off the video. Okay, you should find that a little bit suspicious. You should. Because if it's just an adjustment, he already adjusted his glasses less than eight seconds ago. Okay? And this is a known Freemasonic pose, this hold. So don't let the shill channel say, well, if he touches, it's not touching the glasses. It's holding them in a specific way and, and doing this to highlight. It's the eye of illumination pose. Okay? That's what he's doing there. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you that it's not just Wayne Bush that does this. Okay? Okay, so here we are on the Google Images, as Jan Levi said, says. Here's Matt Groening, the creator of The Simpsons Show. See that pose? See that? Not just a hold, it's not just a touch or adjusting the glasses, it's a hold, it's a pose. It's funny when people can recognize gang signs if they go into a bad neighborhood and they see people throwing up gang signs, they'd be like, shit, those are gang signs, we better get out of here. But when they do this stuff in the media, famous people or people you know, on YouTube that might be connected, it's a possibility. They just dismiss it as, well, he's just adjusting his glasses. I mean, yeah, right. And here's a different pose, but it's in the similar, similar light, we'll call it. Here's Bono, Bono. Grabbing this way, okay? How do you think he got famous? How do you think he got so famous? Okay, so some people are like, oh, okay, Sanity Machine. Do you have any other examples? Here's Sly Stallone. Notice anything here? Is that just an eyeglasses adjustment or is that, does that look like a pose and a hold? Okay.
Illuminati hand signs. Some other people noticed on YouTube. These, this used to be basic stuff, or as some, I sometimes say basic shit, years ago, decades ago, 10, 20 years ago. These days, newbies in the, in the quote, truth community dismiss all this stuff. Well, he's just adjusting his glasses. I've heard them say in videos, it's just like, wow, man. There's one thing to adjust your glasses. There's another thing to hold them that way and do a pose for a picture. I don't think, I, I'm sorry, I can't help everyone. I can't help you see if you can't see, but, you know, they do these hand signs and poses and they're symbolic of something and they put it in your face all the time. And I guess some of you, have, maybe not on my channel, but some on YouTube have consumed so much media. They're so accustomed to seeing this that it means nothing. They just take it for granted that everyone's like this and they're, they're just brainwashed, basically. I think maybe that's what it is. Blinded, in other words. You're wearing a blindfold. You look like blind people to me. Can't see. Even when it's pointed out and explained and shown to you. Even when somebody goes, goes above and beyond and does what I don't require someone to do to show me something, a lot of people still can't see it. They have it pointed out, shown, explained, told what it is, given different examples. It's never enough, though, for some. It's never enough. So better luck next lifetime. I've tried for months with this channel. I've tried for years before I had a YouTube channel. Some people, it just you can't break through to them. I don't think they want to see the truth. That's what I think it is. It's a coping mechanism that they want to live in denial, in a bubble, in a fantasy realm, and they hate the truth and they prefer the lies. They're comforted by the lies of this realm. And they'd rather follow the lies and team evil and the liars. So here we are. Am I 100% sure? Am I condemning Wayne Bush just for a hand sign? No. Is it a piece? Is it exactly the same? Is he doing the 666? No. Look at how his fingers are. So I'm trying to be fair here. I don't just go accusing people based on nothing. I don't look at this and say, well, he grabbed his glasses twice in the first less than 20 seconds, so he's confirmed as Illuminati, confirmed as a Freemason. No, I don't do that. I could just, you know, say, look at him, just look at him, and say, you know, he's a Freemason, but I'm not doing that, okay? Is it a bit of a red flag, though, that he's done this and held them this way two, two times in the first 20 seconds, and all of a sudden he's doing this now that he has a new YouTube channel when he didn't have a YouTube channel all these years? It is a bit suspicious, okay? Is it condemning evidence? No. It's one piece of evidence or potential evidence. Would I condemn Wayne Bush based just on this? No. I'll say it again. No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. And that's not what I'm doing here. But I felt like I should show people this. So if he does more things that are suspicious and, and builds a pattern of behavior and, a, you know, uh, more pieces of the puzzle or more evidence in that direction, then I'll mention it. Remember this guy? Remember this creature? Uh, uh, my books, got my books behind me, got my map, got my map, got my Freemasonic, <laughs> grabbing my eyeglasses all the time, got my Pink Floyd shirt on with the pyramid, with the all-seeing eye in the pyramid, and it's in orange, which equals 33 in numerology, got my shirt with, with a, lot, a lot of symbolism built into that, Okay. See that? See that? Do you see his shirt better now? Pink Floyd and all the orange, and orange equals 33, so that's one. Then the pyramid design, that's two, and then the all seeing eye part within the pyramid, that's three things built into that shirt. There's a lot of other Pink Floyd shirt designs that don't have this in it. So you have to ask yourself, out of the hundreds of choices for a Pink Floyd shirt, because some of you would say, oh, well, he just likes the band, he, Pink Floyd. Why did he choose this particular Pink Floyd shirt to buy and to wear? 
That's the way you should start thinking. Not be paranoid, not just accuse people or, or make false accusations, but really start thinking of the patterns that come up. This guy's a convicted sex offender on a, a, uh, on a sex offender list. He has to register. I showed that in a previous video, so I'm not going to go into all of that again because, you know, you can always watch my videos. See what I'm saying? I realize a lot of people watch my videos, but there's some people that don't watch any videos and they just leave stupid comments. How about you watch my videos that I put time and work into making? How about you do that? And the ones that try to defend this convicted sex offender, I won't tolerate that. I just won't. Because you're sick. That's why. And you're immoral. Okay, so I just saw the 1111 for my video. And uh, what else was I going to cover? Oh, the title. His title for his video is Putting on Those Truther Glasses from Sinister to Sacred. Interesting, the way that he does the poses with his glasses, and he's telling you to put on those truther glasses. And I already know some of you would say, oh, well, he's talking about the glasses from the movie They Live with Roddy Piper, and, you know, I already know. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry for the baby truthers or the truther sheep that come on my channel. If I were you and I was new, I'd just hold off on saying those kind of comments because, you, you know, I, I tend to try not to say things in comments that will embarrass myself, but some people that are brand new, they think that I know nothing. They come here with the assumption that I don't know anything. You know, it's, it's a little bit weird, but I know what he's referring to with truth or glasses. But do you know? That's the, that's the question. Okay, okay. So for the ones that are saying in, in the defense of the sex offender, he's speaking about the la they live glasses, the truther glasses, where you put on the glasses and you can see. Well, here's the one-eyed symbolism for the movie poster for They Live. One-eyed symbolism. Here's John Carpenter doing the eye of illumination pose. He doesn't have glasses on. But it's the same thing that uh, Sly Stallone uses in others, and Jason. Okay? He's part of the club. That's why he's so famous. That's why he was allowed to make movies in Hollywood, for Hollywood. That's how the system works. This is basic shit. I'm not putting you down for being new, but there's some people here that are just cocky and mouthy. They have the newbie truther ego, is what I call it. You should spend a little bit of time listening and learning before you leave stupid comments. That's what I would advise. So it isn't me being rude when I get that kind of stuff like, oh, Stephen, you don't know. He's, he's referencing the movie They Live. Well, here's the guy who came, here's the guy who was, you know, instrumental in making that a film, that film, They Live. This guy, John Carpenter. So you see what he's doing? Again, this is basic shit. I've known this for a lot, many, many years. See how his eyes blacked out there? Just one eye. And this is in shadow. One eye. It's all by design. All by design. I'm not trying to be condescending, but I really do get sick of those comments. Here's the eyeglasses. Grab, pose, and still frame photo. Okay. That is a Freemasonic move. It's all in the movie. Whether you like it or not, you can trump up that movie and say it's fantastic, it has truth drops, everything's just like the movie. They know what they're doing. They're not stupid. Hollywood is completely controlled. They're not stupid. You know? The tiny hats and the Kabbalists and the dark occultists that run Hollywood know what they're doing. They're not stupid. Okay, so if you're new, maybe you're a little bit dumb and a little bit naive. So one eye covered and the sh symbol, okay? It's not carpenter, but here's one eye symbol here. The website Wired. I don't know how much more there's going to be for 
John Carpenter, but David Icke pops up. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I'm suspicious of David Icke, okay? If you can fill Wembley Stadium, travel country to country, you can speak on TV and mainstream media. And yeah, I know they do try to paint him as crazy and stuff like that, but he could very easily be part of the club and controlled opposition. Does he speak some truth? Yeah, he does. For sure. Does that mean he's legit? No. Because that's how it works. They're not going to speak 100% lies. Because it wouldn't work on most people. They mix in some truth with lies. This was I going to show you here. I'll hop back on archaics. My books, got my books, they make me look smart. Got my map, got my map, got my Pink Floyd shirt, got my Pink Floyd shirt. Got my water bottles, fucking pile of filling up a, I don't know if that's a desk or a shelf or what that is. And <laughs> I can't help it, but... uh, <coughs> uh. to show off my Pink Floyd shirt. Isn't that interesting? One eye you could see there, and look at this eye. It's like there's a reflection just in that, that eye, his right eye, on our left side of the screen, obviously, but that's his right eye. Interesting. Just something to take note of. It's notable or noteworthy as, as uh, some YouTubers like to say. It's noteworthy. Oh my, oh my. The double eyeglass uh, grab with the fingers and hold, plus the orange Pink Floyd shirt, and the pyramid with the one eye, the all-seeing eye within it. And it also looks like it has light rays of the sun bursting from it. Interesting. Very interesting. So that's quite a pose. That's quite a hold. What's he waiting for? 51 seconds into his uh, live stream. He hasn't said anything yet. But it looks like he's reading from a screen. You getting some instructions or a script or <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? Got my script. Got my script. There's a felon's prison to YouTube pipeline for YouTube creators that seem to be bought and paid for, controlled opposition. Do some of you like hearing that? No, you don't, because you have emotional attachment to these content creators, these felons. You don't like that. You don't like the truth being said about them. It really triggers some emotionally. But they come on my channel and leave stupid comments trying to defend them. the black eyes and the blank stare look at the stare just look at that just look at that i think that's just like you 
And if it is, then I really don't want you on my channel. I want I want beings with spirits and, and empathy and care for others. And um, I don't want uh, dead eyes, cold hearted killers or, or grapists or felons or violent people. I, I don't want violent demons on my channel. I don't want them as part of my life, to be honest. It's part of why I don't even want to be in this realm. Okay? So if you look at this and you can't tell there's anything wrong there, then of course I'm going to question your, your spiritual discernment. Not just your eyes, but your spiritual eyes, your spiritual discernment. Because you might have some spiritual issues. If you can't see this, when it's, even when it's pointed out to you. Nobody had to point this out and say, hey, Stephen, I think there's something wrong with this guy. And do you see? They didn't have to do that. And I'm not boasting. I'm just saying, I'm doing more for you, trying to show you something here. And if you still can't see it, then, you know, hopefully you stick around on my channel. Hopefully you do wake up and hopefully you're able to see it someday. But I don't know if I can help you, okay? Because I didn't need all this extra help to be able to do this. I didn't need somebody to make these videos about guys like this and point this out and keep talking about it and, sh and say, look at their eyes and look, look at the blank stare and look at this and notice this. I didn't need all that coaching, if you see what I'm saying. And I'm trying my best to help people see. But when people watch my videos and they still don't see it, I don't know what more I can do. I don't know. And it is frustrating because I'm trying. But if you can't see, maybe you've got some spiritual issues. You have to work on yourself. You have to do something where I can't help you. It's up to you to go inside and you better start working on stuff because there must be something wrong. If you can't see that, okay, this is as obvious as it gets. It's not a one-time thing. If you watch this guy's videos, this pops up, this dead-eyed stare all the time. the head move head movements there sorry stumbled over my words a little bit there did you notice those head movements i'm going to replay that for a second some might be shaking their heads that's fine if you don't understand i realize as i'm making these videos there's going to be a certain segment whether it's 10 percent, 20 percent could only might only be two people that see this that just don't get it it's the way it is Almost like he's in a trance. Okay? I don't know if you'll understand. You might have to do some research into this. You might have to do some research that some of us old, quote, truth seekers did 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. You might have to do that. Look into MK Ultra mind control and go from there. That's not the only type of mind control, but that's something that if you search, do a search on YouTube or you do a search on a, in a search engine, it'll pop up with something. Does that mean that what pops up is 100% true? No. Again, you have to have discernment. This, this stuff takes some work and effort. It really does, but I'm sorry for the people that just don't understand. I hope you do one day, but, you know, I hope you stick around and maybe it'll hit you and the penny will drop and it'll sink in and say, wait a second, what he's saying makes sense. And you might finally understand. I hope, I hope you do. I wish you the best. But if you're new... I would hold off on commenting because it, it's either going to just annoy me or it's just going to embarrass yourself or, you know, a lot of times that's what happens. Again, am I suggesting that he could be under mind control? 
maybe he made a deal to get out of prison. And then maybe they took him somewhere and MK altered his ass and are using him as a tool, as controlled opposition, working with Freemasons or dark cultists, secret societies. It's, very, it's a possibility, for sure. That's the way I look at it. I look at possibilities and potentialities. That's what I see. So I'm going to say what I see. Am I 100% sure that's what's happening? No. But do I think something is happening with him and his channel? Yeah, I really do. And uh, he has a lot of brainwashed cult followers in his comments. Okay? They love him. They have hearts for him, blessings, uh, prayers for him. The grannies soak their panties. They, they donate money. Um, right in the comments. They donate in the super chats. They uh, pay for his trips. They paid to build his house, his, uh, his studio for making his videos. He has a studio just to make YouTube videos. Okay? They send him rare books. They buy books for him. They, you name it. They buy uh, thumb drives from him. They buy shirts from him. They call themselves errands. It's just a cult with a bunch of cult followers. Growing and growing and growing. Look at this. Every word, Rebecca, an old granny. Every word from you is a breath of fresh air, she wrote. You were honest, articulate, humble, yet secure and sharp. Thank you for all your efforts. And then 22 people like that. The amount of praise here is revealing and noteworthy. Okay? So I am trying to show you something. They call his work vital. Um, yeah, they kiss his ass. I think a lot of these women would get in the back of his van. He actually owns a van. He's a convicted registered sex offender of a violent crime. He was sentenced to 30 years. He pled guilty. He didn't plead innocent and fight it and, and insist, oh, I'm an innocent man. He pled guilty to that charge. Okay. I bet a lot of these women would get in the back of the van with them. I mean, the amount of, the way they're so gullible and naive, I'm not laughing, I can't explain. I'm just, I'm not laughing because I don't want anything to, violent or bad to happen to them, but their level of stupidity and being gullible and just falling for this shit is just, it's, laugh, it's laughable and it's just, it's, uh, it's unbelievable, it's unreal. It just, uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's, it's beyond words. So if you get what I mean. I hope they don't do that. I hope maybe they watch a video on my channel or another channel exposing them and it sinks in. Hey, wait a second. What they said about, about him is actually the truth. The truth? But Jason's given us some truth from old books. He's like a reading room for truthers. He's got these old books that he reads from <laughs> Mainstream books, mainstream books from mainstream publishers, and these publishing companies are owned by the Rothschilds and the Rockefeller family and all the, quote, elite families, bloodline families going back centuries. But that's some truth, because it's in these old mainstream books. I mean, it's just, what am I supposed to say to these people to help them break free from that mindset? They are cult followers. Pure and simple. They call themselves errants because he calls them that. They just follow along mindlessly. So 
there's the shirt, all right? He's already gone over two minutes without speaking at the start of his live stream. So how long did he hold on to his glasses there when he put them on? Did he just put them on or did he hold on like that and pose that way and stare into his screen or whatever? And then he went back for another little adjustment on it. That piece there was Thessaly and Studios. Yeah, so what was that touch there to your glasses again? That piece there was... What's that right there? <laughs> What's that right there? There you go. Again, you can dismiss it. But I dare you to go into certain neighborhoods of certain, let's say, large U.S. cities where you see a lot of gang signs and gang activity and they're throwing up signs and just dismiss it and walk up to them and say, what are those funny, stupid dance signs you're doing? And then just imitate them and mock them. Why wouldn't you do that? Because you know it's real, right? You know it actually means something, even if you don't understand what those signs are. You know what they're doing has some meaning behind it. And it looks like gang signs, even if you don't know what they mean. Each sign the gang members are doing. So it's the same thing here. You might not understand what he's doing. You might not understand any of this stuff. But to dismiss it doesn't mean that it's meaningless. It just means you're ignorant. You don't know what's going on. You're not educated with this stuff. That's all. There's a lot of newbies that come along that try to dismiss everything. You don't know what you're talking about. Way it is. You can get butt hurt, you can get upset, you can get offended, whatever you want. That's up to you. If you're if you're run on your feelings, you put feelings before the truth and facts, that's your that's on you. That's not my problem. That's on you. We're back on Wayne Wayne's world with Elvira channel. We came back here at thirty three minutes and thirty three seconds. Perfect. Right? Some of you would say, no, that's Freemason. That's the highest honorary degree of Freemasonry. Don't get it. You don't, you don't get it. You just don't get it. You got a little piece of the truth and you think you have the whole puzzle. You don't understand. So I do try to filter out the paranoid and the stupid and the accusatory. Set it all along. I'll continue to try to filter them out. I don't want them in my life, much less just on my YouTube channel. So here we are back here, though. Good old St. Wayne. Wayne and Garth combined, because he has the glasses. And Elvira's looking less Elvira-ish in this video. In this one today, she doesn't have the all black on. Her hair seems to be lighter. Doesn't seem to be pitch black anymore. I don't know what's going on with her, but... Let's it's interesting. Interesting. The reason I called him Saint Wayne is because people think he invented all this and no one can question him and he has all the integrity, he's been around the longest so he can't be controlled, all this kind of stuff. Okay? They think you can't criticize poor Wayne and, you know, 
can't analyze Wayne. Nobody can analyze him or, or disagree with him. Or I'd be careful who you idolize. I would get rid of idols completely. If you want to get out of this realm, that's what I would do. That's my advice. I'll put it again. I wouldn't idolize anyone, including me. Don't idolize anyone if you want to get out of here. Don't have any idols if you want to get out of here. Trying to make that as clear as I can. Don't put anyone on a pedestal and don't make anyone into an idol of yours in this entire fucking realm. And beyond this realm, in the spiritual realms. Bad idea. Way to manifest an afterlife as sovereign spirits. I am here with co creator and co host of the show, Wayne Bush. Hi, Julie. Good to be with you again. <laughs> Another important episode here. Yay. All right. Well, please. It's been around very, very long. Um, but as they say, the, the, car the, yeah, the karma keeps you on this re, uh, reincarnation cycle of apparently but as we've mentioned it's like if you live this life in a human body you're going to accumulate this karma yeah. there's no other it's just Every part of 80 years human. or more so how are you ever going to get off this <laughs> no, it's like gandhi said an eye for an eye you know leaves the whole world blind or whatever um yeah. so you know the book says uh we're... karma makes no sense it's completely false makes no sense because it's a completely rigged system. If you accumulate, quote, karma from lifetime to lifetime, how are you going to fix your mistakes from previous lifetimes when you can't remember your mistakes, your crimes, your harming of, of others, all that stuff from a lifetime ago or a hundred lifetimes ago here? You can't remember, so how are you going to correct it? See what I'm saying? It's like saying, oh, you got to repeat third grade. And you're like, okay, well, I guess it'll be a breeze because I went through third grade. And let's say you're like, hey, I almost passed, right? And they're going to go, well, no, you get your memory wiped, though. And then you're going to, you'll be like, well, how do I remember what I screwed up with my tests and, you know, where I made my mistakes or what I need to focus on learning better? No, you're getting mind wiped. And then you'd be like, well, that could happen to me endlessly. I could never pass third grade then. I could stay there forever. See what I'm saying? So it's like that. It's a rigged system. So for the ones that are pushing karma, they're either controlled opposition or they're foolish. They're believing something that makes no sense. It makes no sense. Okay? You feed all your money into a slot machine in a rigged casino and get what memory wiped every day and not remember that you did it the day before. And then people tell you again, hey, this is rigged. I told you yesterday and the day before, and you don't remember anything. People are warning you, but you're, you know, you get memory wiped every night or every day, and it's just repeating the same thing over and over. So it's the same thing with lifetimes, with karma. If you get memory wiped, mind wiped. So anyway, that's my thoughts on that. But look at the pose here with the fingers and the hand. And this is the Freemasonic warning pose. Would it just be opposed to be for him to be comfortable on camera? Sure, that's a possibility. Do I have to point that out each time when I when I mention these hand signs? I shouldn't have to, but I guess for people that are newbies or completely new, or you know they don't understand or they don't want to look into this stuff, or they think, oh, it's crazy. He's talking about a hand sign. Well, if you look into the Freemasonic poses and so, uh, signs and symbols and gestures, you'll see what I'm talking about. You know, you'll see that they actually use these. They'll even use these in courtrooms that with like the it, Freemason in distress, they raise their kind of arms above their head and like not straight up in the air, but they put their hands up like to either side of their head, like, hey, I need some help, brother. That's them saying it, not me, but that's a Freemason, let's say in a courtroom charged with something 
and they're letting on to the judge and to others or jury, whoever, hey, them saying this, that they're a Freemason and they're in distress without saying any words. They have ways to communicate with their hands and their bodies and their gestures. Body language means something. Again, I'm sorry for the people that come here that don't understand and they just want to argue. Sorry, but if you keep that up, like the ones that do that, I, I end up banning so many of those. I don't have time for that. I don't have time for, I'm busy enough as it is. I don't have time to argue with someone that's posting 10 comments the, uh, their first day on my channel, arguing with everything. It's just like, you know, bye, I'm sorry, but, you know, if you don't understand what I'm doing here and you're going to argue every fucking thing and be rude, bye, bye, bye-bye, you know? It's no loss to me. It's actually a loss to me if I keep you around and put up with your shit and listen to it and waste my time trying to address all that shit when you're spamming 10 of my videos with comments. Then I'm wasting my own time and I just, I'm just too wise to do that. I'd rather you just go off on your own and go back to the shield channels and settle for that shit. You know? Not understand that Freemasons use special handshakes and that's meaningful too. You can spot Freemasons by their handshakes. So yeah, this, this is meaningful. Does it mean 100%? Oh, Wayne Bush is a high degree Freemason. He's using a sign. Could it be that he's just using something without being a Freemason? Sure, it could. Very well could be. But if they keep using sign after sign after sign at a certain point, you know, your pattern recognition should kick in and you should be like, wait, wait a second, this is getting suspicious here. How many, quote, coincidences could there be with, with him? Okay? And then if he starts pushing the consent thing when there's so much evidence of being forced here, and there you go. Like, there's certain things that should throw up red flags for you. They should. Whether they do or not is, is really on you. It's not on me. I see what I see, but I can't see for you. I can't see for a blind man that not only has blind eyes, but has taken the extra step of putting on three thick, heavy black uh, blindfolds to make damn sure he doesn't get any light in. And then saying to me, hey, can you see for me? I'm like, sorry, dude, I can't. Just like somebody that's completely lost and they say, hey, can you show me my way home? And they're lost. And, and I'm like, do you remember the address? And they're like, no, I'm lost. I don't remember the address. And I'm like, hey, I can find my way home, but my home's not your home. My home is not your home. Just like my way out of this matrix might not be your way. Got that? You got that? So for the ones that talk about a door out and all, they try to mock it and all this stuff, that's what some of them do. I've Like Matt McKinley says, well, there, was there just an exit door? No, there isn't. It's not that simple. We're in a complex place. Whereas Hindu and Buddhist texts portray mankind strapped to the wheel of rebirth by the thongs of karma, Dr. Witten's subjects present a more instructional view of karma's workings. Picture the entire human race that works. So did he just place his hand there or is he holding it there for quite a while? These are the things to notice. I, again, I'm not condemning him and saying, well, this is just evidence that completely condemns him. I'm not saying that. So please don't. That's another thing I don't want people to do on my channel is try to put words in my mouth or spin things. And just like the demons do, they say, well, he says he's going to seal everyone in here. I've never said that. I've said repeatedly, I'm going to seal the demons in this matrix, in this hell realm. Not everyone, not quote everyone, never said that. So don't do that on my channel. classroom where over the course of many lifetimes we set ourselves lesson after lesson each one of us is pupil and teacher and we have the power through our actions to direct our own course of learning that's a little bit of a twist on that do i realize that some women have that some do the neck i'm, I'm referring to here some do that are natural born women that have that 
Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. Some women even have a longer neck like that. So it's not just one thing and you just condemn someone. That's foolish and you embarrass yourself. But if there's a lot of evidence, then yeah, you could be like, you know what, I, I kind of suspect that because there's a, quite a few things. You see what I'm saying? Am I sure either way on this? No. On this one? No. Or this one? No. No, I'm not. I'm not 100%. Brick wall there, Pink Floyd, it says the wall right there, the brick wall masonry. So that is there too. It's interesting. Again, is that enough to condemn him and say, oh, I know. No, I don't do that. I don't jump to conclusions. And I wouldn't do that if I was on a jury and your life was at stake. But I think some people that watch my channel and watch these other channels on YouTube would condemn me. They would condemn me and other people, my viewers, they would, I, I would not trust them and not want them on a jury because they jump to fucking conclusions. I mean, um, yeah, they jump to false conclusions and they, they make uh, assumptions and they make false accusations and they see one little thing and they think they've got someone. It's incredible, man. I would never want someone's life to be in the balance of their physical freedom based on some of you. I'd, some of you I would not want on a jury ever. You don't belong there. You're so paranoid, and you think you have everything figured out by one thing. And you're baby truthers, you're truthers sheep, and paranoid. You're not good detectives, and you're not someone that examines the evidence. You go by paranoia and feelings, and your emotions, and your bias. If you're biased against someone, and you hate someone, then you accuse them. You're at that level, a childish toddlers infantile level so yeah i am going to call out people like that and it's a very small amount on my channel but it's also a big amount on other channels somewhere between 60 70 80 90 percent on some of these shield channels are like that are like that they're emotional they're triggered they're biased they're paranoid they use accusations as a weapon against people they don't care what the truth is you want to smear people with lies, slander. That one is not as much car in there, um, according to him. Um, so, and it says, then the bardo Ben was aware of a voice which said, if you do it right this time, things will work out all right. If not, you will require a learning environment of even greater intensity. You know, in other words, the beatings will continue until morale improves. Right? Wow. Uh, yeah. So, and then in 1993, like as I mentioned, Doris Cannon um, and Michael Newton's books, which are very, very popular within. So I'm not accusing her, but are there some masculine features we'll say about her face? Yeah. And the neck? Yeah said that she has children. I don't know if that's true or not. It could be. She may very well be a natural woman. I don't know for sure. But that's also not the main focus of this video. I'm trying to get people to be skeptical, but not to be paranoid. I want thinkers, not people that just jump to false conclusions at the drop of a hat. I don't want that. Way too much of that in the so-called YouTube truth community. Way too much. Spiritual community. Um, Cannon's book came out in 1993 and Michael Newton's came out in 1994. So I'm going to cover Dolores's first and then we probably okay. won't get to Michael Newton's uh, material until maybe the second part. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. But um, her book was uh, Conversations with the Spirit Between Death and Life. And um, just briefly, she was educated and, and lived in Missouri until her marriage uh, in 1951 to a career Navy man. And she spent 20 years traveling all over the world as a Navy wife. Mm -hmm. And so 
the book mentions the death experience and she asks what her subject, you know, what happens when somebody dies? And they say, you just rise up and leave it. You go up here in the light. And she asks, what do you do when you're there? And the subject says, perfect all things. And so Dolores says, where do you go if you have to go away from the light? And they say, back to earth. And another one, Dolores was saying, you know, one of the biggest fears people have is that they are so afraid of dying. And the subject says, that's not so bad. That's the easiest thing I'll ever do. It's like the end of all confusion until you start all over again. And then it's more confusion. Then why do pe people keep coming back? She asks. They say, you must complete the cycle. You must learn all and over, overcome all the things of the world so you can enter into perfection and everlasting life. And Dolores says, that's a big order, though, to try to learn everything. And the subject says, yes, sometimes it's very tiring. And Dolores says, seems like it would take a long time. And they said, well, from where I am here, it all seems so simple. I am in control. For instance, I can understand the fear and the way I feel now. I feel like I couldn't be touched by it, yet there's something about the human person. When you're there, it engulfs you. I mean, it becomes part of you, and it touches you, and it's not so easy to stand off and be objective. And um, another... So, I, so if you got it, I'm sorry if I'm interrupting. It, it's, no, it's, no. Like they, it's like they're okay. over there, and they have it all figured out, but they come here to, to have it not figured out. out. Right. To, in order to... To grow, it, 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 but they're already... Yeah, so if you have it all figured out there, you come here to forget it all and uh, to perfect something you had perfect there that it's almost it's impossible here to do because you're in a human body with a human brain, human, human ner nervous system, um, cognitive biases, um, you have a governor on your brain, the nervous system, the way that it works, you can go into flight or fight mode, fear, anxiety, all that stuff. Um, depression, grief, sadness. Um, so basically what they're saying is you have it all perfect there, but you come here to unlearn and they might as well say you come here to be trapped, basically. Because if you believe you have to be perfect to get out of here, that makes no sense and you're setting yourself up for failure. That would be impossible to become perfect while in this imperfect realm that's stacked against you completely. So anyone with the belief that, oh, in, in order to get out of here, we have to be perfect here, impossible. You've set yourself up for failure, if you get what I'm saying. That's, the, it, that's more, it's, it's more difficult than, let's put it this way. This might not be the greatest analogy, but just about everyone listening to my voice has seen a, excuse me, seen a basketball in a basketball court or stood on one in your life. Okay. So you're at full court, you're standing basically almost right underneath one basket and pick, visualize the whole length of the basketball court, okay? You have the ball in your hand. You don't just have to sink a basket from half court, like the center of the court, right? You, you're almost underneath one basket with enough room to throw to the next end of the court into the other basket. And you have to make a thousand straight baskets that way. Without even hitting the rim. Just nothing but net. Let's put it that way if you know basketball. So some people would say it's basically a miracle to hit one of those. If you stood there just all day throwing and throwing and throwing at somebody feeding you more basketballs. To just keep going and going and going. You could be there for hours, but you got to hit a thousand in a row. Nothing but net. No rim, no backboard, no, just swish, swish, swish. The full length of the court. I mean, there were, there were challenges on NBA where a fan would get a million dollars or a hundred thousand or whatever if they hit the basket from half court. So this is twice as far, and you don't have to do it once. You've got to do it a thousand times in a row, not just get a thousand of them in a lifetime, but in a row. You've got to hit a thousand straight to get out of here. And that's still nothing compared to be, living a perfect life here. Okay? It's impossible to be perfect here, to live a perfect life. So if you go by that, you're fucking yourself. You're dooming yourself, saying, you know what, I'll never be perfect. So you got, if you have that mentality, you gotta get rid of it. You gotta get rid of that. Okay? 
you got to forgive yourself for your mistakes your and your regrets drop your regrets like oh hey i never learned to play the guitar in third grade or i should have kept playing piano and taken lessons or i should have done this or i wish i would have done this or you know wish i wouldn't have broke up with this person in high school as a girlfriend or boyfriend whatever your situation might be okay go easier on yourself mistakes also i wanted to say that i'm not hammering people for starting off where you began you might have been watching quantum of con man channel or forever con man channel you might have started off years ago watching the alex jones shit show the shill show the alex jonestown show as i used to call it quite often complete shill controlled opposition you might have started off there you might have started off watching david ike you might have started off watching uh mark passio or whoever i mean uh, david ike or you know his name max egan that hi folks ladies and gentlemen folks 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 he says folks and all that stuff and gentlemen and all that more than anybody any youtuber i've ever seen do I think that's the guy's a shill? Yeah, I think he's controlled opposition. Same with Passio. I mean, anyone that gets that famous and gets to that level, if you look into them a little bit, you'll see what I'm talking about. But I'm not condemning you for starting off there, is what I'm saying. Just like I'm not condemning you for making mistakes. And it's not me saying I forgive you. There's nothing to forgive. Okay? It's just I don't condemn you. And uh, I accept the fact that we start somewhere. We all start somewhere. But if you made it to my channel, I think you made it pretty fucking far, to be honest. It's not me tooting my own horn. It's me being proud of you for making it this far and sticking around and not ditching and, and uh, saying I'm out after, after the first day or two and leaving and not coming back and saying, well, it's, he sounded harsh or I watched one video of the sanity machine that I didn't like or whatever the case may be, but... If you stuck around this long, you know. So, yeah, I mean, stuck around that long, then yeah, I am proud of you for being here, continuing to watch. See what I'm saying. And also, if you're searching for the truth and you're doing the right thing, you're trying to do the right thing, you're trying to do what's good and right and moral, even if you made mistakes and I just wanted to get that across just to clarify that I'm not hammering people for where they came if they came from that channel. But if you come from those channels and you just defend trying to defend and defend Matt McKinley and you're a fanboy or a fangirl and it's just it goes on for weeks, it's like do you really think that I want to hear that every day? You know, my channel. If you want to praise him, by all means, praise the shit out of him on his channel in his comments. But do you really think I want to read that? A guy that I've exposed in how many videos? Do you really think maybe you should watch my videos and say, oh, oh, now I understand. That's why he doesn't want me to come here and praise Matt and try to defend Matt. Because, you know, the sanity machine... Sees th the, the sanity machine sees through Matt McKinley, the McKinley bloodline. And, you know, I, I see through the guy. I see what he's doing. But anyway, if you come here with an open mind, then you're welcome with open arms. It's that simple. You come here and you're respectful. You're not rude. You're polite. You have manners. You, if you ask a question, you're not being rude or saying you don't know shit or every, all, all your... Your whole channel shitting on everyone else, some people say, is their first comment. It's like, fuck you. You know, get out of here. I'm not going to put up with that. Because it's not true, for one thing. And it's rude for another thing. And it's like, I don't have to take that behavior. I wouldn't take that face to face. If I open up my door and somebody was at my door, they knocked on my door and they're like, fuck you, all you do is shit. I'd slam the door in their face and say, get the fuck out of here. Like, fuck you. Fuck you. Do you think I'd stand there and listen to them rant at me and yell at me and insult me and name call for half an hour? No. I'd never do that. I'd never tolerate that. You know? I think I would let somebody follow me home that was ranting and 
cursing at me on the street, on a street corner, if I was walking somewhere and I was, you know, 10 blocks away from my house, I would just let them follow me home and, and carry on uh, putting up with them, shouting in my ear and coming up to me and, and being aggressive and just let them walk right into my door. Because I, I supposedly, quote, have to hear them out and have to hear... The, no, I don't have to tolerate that shit. You know? So when it comes to my channel, I don't have to have them here. If they're going to behave that way. If they can't be civil and uh, use some manners. And, and if they're rude, if they're a rude asshole and aggressive and insulting and just trashy and accusatory and paranoid, I'm not going to deal with it. I wouldn't in real life. So why would they think I would deal with it on my YouTube channel when it's as simple as clicking block? It's simple. That's all, that's all it is. So anyway, I just wanted to say that. So where you start off, where you're beginning is not going to be held against you. It's where you're at now. And if your mind is open and you're here to learn and come with an open mind, that's awesome. That's all that I expect. But yeah. Anyway, I'm going to end this video here. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for thinking. Take care, everyone. Bye.